My sister ended herself and I'm not sad about it, and husband won't stop begging for forgiveness. Original Post So I 28 female, have been with my husband 30 male for 9 years and married for 2. Me and my sister 26 female were never really close, though we didn't hate each other. Anyways, I've been suspicious of my husband cheating on me for a while, and went through his phone while he slept. That when I saw a text on a texting app he has on his phone that read, I really do love you and the love we make, but I'm tired of being your little secret. This has been going on for too long, and you need to tell her or I will. My heart dropped. I woke my husband up screaming at him, and showed him the text and he admitted to everything. He just started crying and telling me that the text came from my sister, and that they've been sleeping together since the night before our wedding. He then said she begged him not to marry me, and he told her no because he loved me, and they had hooked up for the first time that night. And the second time was on her 25th birthday three months later, where she threw a party we both attended. He went to use the bathroom and she followed him, and seduced him and he couldn't stop himself, and then came back to the party like nothing happened. And they continued doing it any time they could ever since. He told me the story through sobs, and I couldn't stop crying and screaming how could he do this to me, and with my sister. I broke stuff in the house, even went full on waiting to exhale, and burned his clothes on the grill. He begged and pleaded that it'll never happen again, that he'll cut her off and we can move away from everybody and start over just us. I just spit in his face and told him that I hated him and never wanted to see him again. I went to my parents' house that night and told them everything. They didn't believe me at first, but he called me and I put him on speakerphone while he confessed more, begged and pleaded, and my parents believed everything. The next day my sister came to my parents' house. She saw me crying on the couch and asked me what was wrong, and I just snapped. I didn't say a word and just beat her up, she had a black eye and I knocked a tooth out. My dad broke us up, and my mom slapped her so hard across the face she started crying. Before I could tell her I knew everything, my mom already spilled the beans and called her a cheap woman and pushed her outside. She begged my mom to forgive her, not me, and I'm the one she betrayed. Word spread around about what happened fast. He wouldn't stop trying to win me back. He kept showing up to my job, followed me to the bank, popped up randomly in grocery stores, and even made a post on Facebook admitting to what he did, and expressed his love and guilt, and he accepted all the backlash he got. But I didn't care, I told him to go screw himself. I guess he hasn't been seeing my sister since everything went down, because a friend of mine sent me a screenshot of a post she made saying something like, I can't believe this. For two years he held, kissed me, made love to me, and made me feel like I was his world and just ghost me like the last two years didn't happen. Why is this happening to me? Why can't you just answer the phone? Why don't you love me anymore? I guess people put two and two together and she got a lot of backlash, and it wasn't too long before her post was deleted along with her Facebook. I was angry this witch got a lot of nerve to cry about my husband, so I drove to her apartment and tried to get her to open the door, but she called the police on me so I left. She had to quit her job because her co-workers found out and shunned her. She had no more friends because they didn't trust her, and my parents refused to speak to nor acknowledge her. Last Monday on the 16th, I got a call saying my sister was dead, and it was self-inflicted. I didn't know how to feel. I didn't want her to die, but I could care less about her well-being at the same time. We just got her last note, and she explained how she felt so guilty for falling in love with my husband and betraying me, but that she couldn't help her feelings for him. She said she can't continue to live this way knowing everyone hates her and especially me, and she knows she shouldn't feel this way because I was the one that was betrayed. I don't believe it. I think the real reason she did it is because he doesn't want to see her anymore. I know my sister and when she falls, she falls hard, picture Cassie from Euphoria. Besides, since everything came to light, she would text him begging for him to talk to her and sending voicemails about how she needs him and to talk to her or she'll end herself. My husband sent me a screenshot every time she texts, even let me listen to the voicemail. I don't plan on going to her funeral, and I don't plan on letting my parents hear that voice message because they're already in a huge wreck. They won't bother me about not going and they understand why, they will be paying for all the funeral arrangements. As for my husband, I still love him so deeply but I hate him at the same time. Part of me wants to try to work it out just to spite that dead witch, and the other part has morals. I can't picture my life without him, but every time I see him, I picture him with her, and I refuse to live the rest of my life torturing myself like that. Just needed to get this off my chest since she just died so I can't really talk to anybody in the real world like this. Now for the top advice before reading the update. Sweet Jesus, this is a lot. Yes, move. Get a new start. I feel a lot of blame needs to go in the direction of your husband. Such betrayal on his part too. Keep strong and keep talking with family and friends. 
Something like this can be very difficult to process, even if at first you don't feel much, can be the shock of it all. I had a best friend do this and found counseling helped a lot. A lot to unpack in this situation, so highly recommend a professional to help you process it all and move on. Time helps a lot too, as hard as that is. He went to use the bathroom and she followed him and seduced him and he couldn't stop himself. He could have stopped himself, but he didn't. It takes two to tango. Sure OP blames her sister, but I hope she realizes that her husband shares just as much blame and she doesn't do something stupid like taking him back and placing all the blame on her sister. He wasn't forced in that bathroom, or the night before his wedding, he willingly continued it for two years behind her back. With all the tragedy in this story, I'm most baffled by how people still write lengthy private messages and confessions on their Facebook wall like it was 2011. Seriously, and I barely use Facebook. I agree personal business is not for Facebook, and that humiliated me even more. It would be more humiliating if you got back with him. Wish you the best OP. Find a good therapist and work through this crap before it works through you. And please for the love of God, don't get back together with that tool. Being a cheater is a personality trait. Someone either does it or doesn't. There's no one-time thing with this. Man OP, I can't even fathom being in that kind of situation. You've had an awful sister and have an awful husband. You have every right to move on from him, and if y'all don't have kids, this is a good opportunity to start fresh and create new peace in your life. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide how you proceed. But if I were in your shoes, I would block him out of your life. If you decide to do that, ensure you have a support system, whether it be friends, family, or a therapist. And make the necessary arrangements to ensure your safety isn't compromised, given he has a history of stalking. I wish you all the best. We don't have kids fortunately, and as hard as it's been, I've officially blocked him and changed my number. I'm thinking about going to Iowa just to get away from his stalking. And I do plan on divorcing him even though I'm dreading it. And now for the update. I'm going to answer some questions because people are being really nasty towards me or simply not comprehending what I wrote and how I wrote it. 1. Why aren't you angry with your husband? Why did he get off so easily? I am angry with him. I burned his clothes, I even spit in his face, and that is the most disrespectful thing you can do to a person. Was it wrong? Yes, but I did it. Plus, I'm 5 feet 7 140 pounds to his 6 feet 3 230 pounds. It is not physically possible for me to kick his butt the way I did my sister who is the same height and weight as me. Also, he did receive a lot of backlashes but he chose to accept the backlash he got and face it head on. Most of this backlash came from people that know and love me. A lot of his male friends didn't shun him because I don't know, they're men I guess, his friends could care less that he slept with his wife's sister. I do still love him because love doesn't just go away after 9 years together because of a heartbreak, but I will be divorcing him. And I the courts will rule in my favor because of all the evidence I have from the cheating. 2. You and your family have been mistreating your sister for years because you attacked her and your mom slapped her. This one really got to me. No, my parents were never abusive towards me or my sister, we never got a spanking of any sort growing up. My mother slapping my sister was the first time she has ever laid her hands on anyone. Was it wrong? Yes. But talking about my mother like she's the devil incarnate for one slap to the face for an unforgivable act is nowhere near as bad as what I did to her. Yes, I attacked her because like I said in a comment, I reacted with a fit of rage. I saw red and only red, hence why I spit in my husband's face. It was wrong to attack her, and it certainly isn't my proudest moment. I'm not a violent person, but I did choose violence because I have never experienced a hurt or betrayal that severe in that exact moment, and I thought with my emotions, and not logic. I do feel bad for attacking her, and if I could change it I would but I can't. 3. You drove your sister to ending herself by bullying her, and why did the community shun her but not your husband? I didn't make this clear in my post, but I did not once bash or harass her online. The most I did to her was attack her in my parents' home. I was not behind any backlash she received for her actions. Did I try to stop the backlash? No I didn't. I knew it was going on and didn't care to stop it nor defend her. I was not going to defend her for sleeping with my husband. I thought she should deal with the consequences of her actions. I guess the real reason for that even I can admit is because women are always the first to be shamed. If you sleep with your sister's husband you're a cheap woman. If man sleeps with his wife's sister then he's a cheating idiot. I hate double standards as much as the next person, but people will always act them whether we like it or not. And no, she never tried to text or reach out to me to explain why she did it nor apologize, which is a major reason I didn't believe the note. 4. You went to her apartment. What were going to do if she opened the door? I know what I would not have done, I had no intentions on attacking her physically again, I did that already. 
But I did have questions. I wanted to know why, how long, what was he not telling me that she can? I asked all these questions on the outside of the door. But I don't blame her for not opening the door because I wasn't knocking softly, nor asking my questions in a very nice tone. Once again, I had no intention of attacking her again. And the reason I used a throwaway with a random avatar is because the same people that shunned her are the same people that believe she was truly sorry because ending herself proves it, so I can't vent to everyone in the real world. Yes, my sister is gone. No, the grief didn't hit me yet. My husband isn't the only one that broke my heart and trust. My sister did too. She wasn't some random woman that didn't know he was a married man. She was my blood sibling that attended our wedding, slept with him the day before my wedding, and continued to do so. Call me evil all you want, but I don't believe she was sorry for what she did to me. I think she was sorry for not just getting caught, but the consequences that came with it. Because if I never went through his phone, I never would have saw that text, and never would have known. And this could have gone on with them for another two plus years without me knowing a thing. She would still be alive, yes, but screwing my husband while waiting to have him all to herself. Also, I did type something really harsh, not going to retype it, but I do still love my sister, just as I still love my husband. But I won't be forgiving him for what he did to my family, and I'm not sure how anybody honestly got from my lack of grief that I was celebrating my sister's death. No, I am not glad she died, but I am not sad. That grief will hit sooner or later, I don't know when, but it will. And I made the decision to attend her funeral tomorrow. I'm not going with intentions to ruin everything or have a full-blown tantrum. People read a few sentences and think they know what type of person I am. Just my opinion, but I hate when people say someone is clearly sorry after doing something like that over and over again. If someone is willing to do something over and over knowing it is bad and exactly what they are doing, they really were not sorry to me. She's been doing this for what, like two years? She never felt bad about it, and if she did feel bad it wasn't enough to stop herself. People like that only care when they're caught and can't handle the repercussions, or else they would have stopped after the first few times. I can see her getting caught up in the thrill and not thinking about it, but after doing it and then facing you at a party. She definitely had time to understand her actions and why they were wrong well before she was caught. Being sorry doesn't undo doing it with OP's husband. Also, being sorry is the bare minimum in this case. I thought OP's reaction was relatively measured, considering the severity of the betrayal. Once she got her emotions under control, she was perfectly reasonable in her actions in my opinion. People rushed to make saints out of the dead. My dad shot himself, partially due to our relationship falling apart. But it is not my fault, it never will be. I'm really curious as to how your scumbag husband has took her death. I don't know, haven't spoken to him since I found out she was gone. You don't have to explain yourself to anybody, you did nothing wrong. Divorce him and go to therapy, it will be a long and hard road but you got this. I think most emphatic people will understand why you reacted the way you did. When you provoke, betray, hurt someone to that degree, don't come in with some bull about how someone should behave. I saw that one comment to you, and it seemed that person wanted to brag about themselves and their family. I don't know what that person is going through to make them attack you to big themselves up, but it's very transparent. Wishing you all the best moving forward. Forget about how you reacted in the past. Temporary insanity is a thing. I think most people may very well react the way you did, if not worse. Last story. So my 40 female best friend from high school 40 female got my husband 41 male drunk and high then slept with him while her husband 40 male watched. I think it started around 2016 that they had their drunken group activity, but after that, my best friend started blackmailing my husband into just hooking up with her, saying she would tell me and ruin his life at home or that she could get him fired from his job. He kept trying to cut things off with them, block their number. But then they would call him and threaten him from other people's phones. He hadn't talked to her in months, then she just showed up outside the office and said that she was watching him and that he better stop ignoring her. He came home distraught and decided to tell me everything, because he feels he can't get away from the mess he made. The situation totally explained why over the past few years, his paranoia, anxiety, depression, and problem drinking have greatly increased, causing problems in our marriage. The whole time she was telling him I was cheating on him too. I have never, but he would accuse me of stuff. Only after he told me about sleeping with my former best friend, did he realize they had been basically brainwashing him. I am actually not mad at my husband, it happened when we were briefly separated, and he has a history of being used, and makes bad decisions when he drinks, and she has a history of sleeping with married men. I knew she was a snake, I just never thought she would bite me. I am needing advice on what to do. Do I go to the police and made an incident report, or go ahead with a restraining order? I know she has pictures too. 
My husband is a teacher and afraid that she will send them to his school and get him fired. Now for the top advice. Police. That is blackmailing and more horrible crime. Gather as much evidence as you can. Also get a restraining order. I agree, unfortunately my husband had deleted their messages until last November. So I don't have much from his side. I guess we will go to the police department this afternoon. I would speak to a lawyer first. His employment is tangled up in this. I would make sure you both understand what the potential consequences will be for reporting this to the police. Please understand, your husband has been grievously violated and used by these people. However, they can still seriously harm him. Make sure you have your legal ducks in a row before you start the ball rolling with the police. A chat with the police wouldn't hurt. You might try to get in front of this with the school too, unless you live in some kind of crazy town. He is a new teacher, and he is really scared to make any waves. I don't know who he is going to bring it up, but he needs to.